I really love doing videos, but I really hate starting them because I never know how, so fuck it. Hey, I'm uh, Bradley here, another episode, Overkill Reviews. Standard, you know, I'm sitting here. You fucking know what you're getting. It's snowing outside, which means it's cold, which means you should layer up to stay warm. One way we can help you with that, head over to our Patreon, where we got an exclusive Mark Riddick design banger long sleeve that is an absolute banger. It's limited, you can only get it until November 30th, so get it, because if you don't, I'll have one and you won't. You don't want me to be cooler than you. That would really fucking suck. This week we've got the preeminent dual vocal, dual language deathcore band. You know, if I was smart, I probably would have like Google translated some shit so I could come out of that video with some like really clever French phrase, but I forgot to do that, so fuck it. I'll just say that's fucking sick. Anyway, it's a new album, Despised Icon, called Purgatory, out now on Nuclear Blast Records. I feel like Despised Icon's like biography is not that interesting, but I'm gonna tell you it anyway. So yeah. Like I said, their bio's not that interesting. Their music is though, but anyway, this is about the bio. Despised Icon formed in 2002 in Montreal. They're notable for the two vocalists thing. The vocalist and de facto frontman Alex Arion is kind of on the like the mid mid level growls. While Steve Reiner Wah is more on the like pig squeals, the the gutturals, the high pitched screeches, that kind of shit. These guys really broke out of. Quebec and off of local label Galley when they signed to Century Media and released The Healing Process in 2005. The Ills of Modern Man followed in 2007 and at least in Canada, I remember In the Arms of Perdition being basically everyone's MySpace song back then. Just when you thought the band couldn't get any bigger, they released Day of Mourning in 2009, which came with MVP, inarguably their biggest song. The band broke up in 2010, then they came back in 2014 as a live band. They dropped new album Beast in 2016, and now they're coming back with their second post-reunion album. Let's see if it stands up to that one, or more importantly, the ones that precede. I didn't mention another thing for which this band is known in my bio because I kind of want to save it for my review, and that is drummer Alex Pelletier, aka Alex Grind. The dude is an absolute monster behind the kit, Honestly, I even tweeted Alex Grind for Prime Minister during Canada's recent election, so that says it all. This album is like very fucking fast, even by his standards. The track Lightspeed is exactly that. The build up to the breakdown kind of feels similar to MVP, but I think this one maintains the energy presented in the first half better in the second half. It's still a breakdown, like it's still slow, but it's not like sluggishly slow. It's funny, I just talked about shit being like you know, fast, and now I'm talking about like slower, more groovy parts. In Apex Predator, the opening riff is kind of groovy in the vein of like that new decapitated kind of sound, but instead of letting it fall into like drudgery, boring, groovy bullshit, which the band never does, again, Grind really picks the song up and breathes new life into it. V Dange, which I think means like the life of angels or some shit, I don't know. I took French in high school, but, uh, and I forgot all of it. Anyway, it effortlessly switches from blasts to beats, and the change of pace really accentuates and adds to both. Similarly, the vocalists do a great job of trading off, both here and about a minute and a half into light speed. In both cases, and all over the album as a whole, they add to one another's threats, even more so when they layer their vocals atop one another. Sure, on this album there may be a little bit less chaos a la metallic hardcore that they showcased on the healing process, bar the wee 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 breakdown in the title track, but the speed makes this feel like an absolute clusterfuck in the best way, achieving the same kind of frantic, chaotic thing through the speed best utilized in the subgenre of the drummer's nickname, Grind. In contrast, the slam parts seem to be even more of a focus this time around, giving Marwa time to shine with his like, pig squeal, gutturals, all that cool shit. Y'all remember the part in the furtive monologue video where dude just starts shooting like tentacles up out of the ground like a boss? It be like that. In general, the thing that's best about this album is pretty intangible and hard to understand if you're not familiar with the band, who kind of steadily became a little bit more influenced by the tough guy, mosh metal, hardcore sound throughout their career. It's such a subtle thing that after 
hammering this album into my head for a long time. I started to second guess if it was even something that was really there or if I was just imagining it. And then I listened to their last two albums and I could totally hear the difference. It's more of a vibe thing than anything else, but I guess it can be best illustrated by the difference between this album's more hardcore leaning song, Snake in the Grass, and the last album's one, Bad Vibes. That song feels more like an outtake from Alex Arian's Obey the Brave, which is more on the tough guy, hardcore side of things, but with you know some blast beats sprinkled in for good measure. Whereas this album's song feels more like a slam band's moshy song. Similarly, the hardcore bit in Apex Predator feels more like Dying Fetus, or ingested when they take things in the hardcore direction. <laughs> Moving on to the worst bits, the song Moving On feels the most like their Day of Mourning album with their like groovy, melodic lead bit thing, fucking whatever, I don't know how to talk about guitar. Honestly, the song's probably necessary because it really does break up the rest of the album with something different, but it c did kind of stand out as my least favorite on the album. I'm also not huge on the orchestration. It kind of feels like, it's just not, it's not a necessary part of their sound. They do so well without it that they don't need to add it. Honestly, as far as worst parts, there aren't really many. I guess you could say that the songs tend to blend together because they're all so fast, but that just means your teeny tiny brain can't keep up with them. Alex Gron manages to find ways to fit drum fills into the tiniest of pockets, so every half second all over this thing is super interesting. Deadweight is a great example of this. Actually, that's probably why I love this album so much, is that the drums remind me a lot of the title track from Ills of Modern Man, which is my favorite Despised Icon song, because it's just like <laughs> Yeah. Throughout this album, I just kept thinking how hard it is to compare bands to Despise Icon. These early influencers on the deathcore sound never really found bands who could quite sound like them. Sure, there's something, you know, like suffocation, you know, dying fetus, etc., in their sound, but they've really managed to make something that is their own. This album manages to retain that despite being their most straight ahead death metal one yet. Much is made of Quebec's storied tech death history, and obviously I agree, I did a whole video on it. That being said, I don't think enough respect is given to the province's contributions to deathcore. I feel like some of the reason a lot of people hate deathcore is that after a while it just became dumbed down. You know, it was like death metal for people who couldn't really play death metal. But the bands that came from Quebec, such as Beneath the Massacre, Ion Dissonance, The Last Felony, were all technically proficient and prove that the province has contributed a lot. And Despised Icon were the leaders and still are. For that reason, I'm giving Despised Icons purgatory four out of five skulls on Overkill Reviews. And I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments whether you agree or not. I'm sure there are still gonna be comments of people who do course sucks. I don't care. I disagree. It's shout, it's out shout out time. time. And I'm sure this first one will come as no surprise for the avid banger viewer. I'm giving a shout out to my boys in Vatican whose album Soul Impulse is out today. I said that you guys would not, you know, be surprised because I used to wear their hoodie all the time. You know, it's metallic hardcore. They're moving a little bit more on that groovy side, a little bit less riffy, but hey, still dope. And we also have Abigail Williams and their album Walk Beyond the Dark out now on Blood Music. They're like the, the black sheep of black metal. I feel like that band unfairly got a, a weird rap earlier in their career. I don't know why, but I feel like they're not cool enough for like the true black metal dudes, but this band has always been super cool. And now they've got my boy Bryce Butler on drums and he's cool as shit and he always smiles on stage when he's playing. So he's probably a bad person to play in a black metal band that, you know, maybe isn't getting cred, but fuck cred. The album's cool, the band's cool. I'm cool, sometimes. You're cool all the time. Thanks for watching, see you later. Is this my final way? You